Welcome to another one of our series of training videos, guys. Today we're going to be talking about expansion tanks. Uh, we want to talk about how we install them on heaters. We also want to talk about how do we make sure that they're installed properly. Now, one of the things about expansion tanks is we want to see them installed on every single water heater can take them. Now, every once in a while we do run into water heaters. Like, let's take a perfect example. Water heaters that are shoved underneath air handlers. Not going to be a space for us to put an expansion tank there pretty much every place else that we're going to be doing it so that we actually have space to put it on there we would like to see it installed so how do we install the expansion tank well so right off the bat we want to make certain that we have enough room and as you can see here as we've kind of seen is that we have the ability to have some space here um, so you know what do we want to do to be able to make this easy on ourselves well if we have an electric heater one of the easiest ways we can do this is we have brass tees that you're going to take and you're going to go ahead and spin that on there. There we go. So you get that bare ass T spun on there. Obviously, when we do this really, then we will go ahead and have Teflon tape and stuff like that on there as well. Now, the very next thing we do is not going to be to put on the expansion tank unless we've done something else that's very important. We need to take one of our gauges and check the house pressure. So if it's 40, if it's 45, it's 50, whatever it might happen to be, but we want to make certain that we actually have the correct pressure that the house is. Now, once we know what the pressure of the house is, and let's just say it's 50 PSI, okay? If you guys will take a look at this, you guys will see that um, it comes with a nice little label on there. It tells you a few things on here. It tells you when it was made, it tells you what model number it is, how big it is, but most importantly, it tells you the starting pressure that it is, 40 PSI. Well. One of the things that's important is when we check the pressure on the house, we're not just doing it for the fun of it. We're actually checking it to make certain that we can set the charge on this correctly. And so what we're going to do is we're going to get our handy dandy bicycle pump, or if you guys have a little electric one, you guys can use that. And you'll go ahead and put a little pressure in here to get it up to the 50 PSI, since that's what we tested this to be. Again, if it was 60 PSI, you'd set it to 60 PSI. So you pressurize it up, and then you're going to use your handy dandy uh, tire gauge here. You'll put it on there and you'll check it. And this one registers just like it said it should. It was right at 40 PSI. So we would have pumped this up if we need to. We can use the back of this to go ahead and put it on here and let out a little air. So that way you can let the air out once you feel like you're in the correct position. You go ahead and check it again. Make sure that you're right where you need to be. Once you're where you need to be, then we can go ahead, put your cap back on. That finishes the look of it. Okay. All right, then you're gonna go ahead and make sure you take your cap off. And you wanna go ahead and have your Teflon or your pipe dope or whatever it is that you're gonna use on that. And then you're gonna go ahead and mount it up top. All right, we spin it right in place. Now, one of the things I want you guys to notice is this has some nice little uh, flat spots right here, right, uh, kind of right by where the threads are. We want to take a crescent wrench, a crescent wrench, not a pair of pliers, and use a crescent wrench to tighten this up. The reason why we don't want to use a pair of pliers is, number one, we don't want to damage the actual paint that's on here because that's going to help it stop uh, from rusting. But we just also want to make it look as good as possible. There's no point for us to chew off that paint with a pair of pliers. We want to use a actual adjustable wrench. So anyway, we want to get this on there tight enough. Obviously, I don't have this on super tight. That's the reason why it's moving a little bit on us. But what's great is if we can is try to get it to a position that we're then able to use our sticker and place our sticker on there. Now, we talked about this before as well. This is where we want to use the single sticker. We don't need to use the one that actually has the checklist on here. Even though we will be checking this, we want to have that single sticker up on there. We'd also like to then go ahead and actually write in black marker on this the actual installation date. So for us, if that was right now, we would actually put 11 of 2018 so 11 slash 18 that way we know it was installed in november of 2018. so that's how we install these on an electric water heater it's also how we check the pressure and make sure that's set correctly now on a gas water heater how are we going to do that differently well number one we won't be able to use the t because the flue pipe comes up right here so that would actually run into this but we also can't bring cpvc within uh you know so many inches of the actual flue pipe as well so we're going to have to come off to the side so what we've been doing on that is we've actually been 
swinging over uh, sometimes a T, sometimes a uh, sometimes using copper, but we'll bring it over here to the side so that, that way what we can do is mount it away from that flue pipe. And what we want to do then is we want to mount it you know, someplace over here so that way it's good and sturdy. One of the things that we will never do is we will never mount this on CPVC. It's never made to be mounted on CPVC or PEX. It's not strong enough to support this. Seems pretty light to start with, but whenever you get some water in here or or shit, when it gets waterlogged and this is completely full, it's going to be quite heavy. So this is a tank is a 2.1 gallon tank. Even if it was only two gallons, you're looking at roughly around 17 pounds when this is filled up. That's way too much weight for CPVC to support it. So it needs to be put onto a nice solid piece of pipe. So brass or copper is how we want to see that installed. Now, another thing that we can talk about on this is how is this tank doing what it's supposed to do? And what is it supposed to do? Well, these tanks are designed to help buffer the pressure, the thermal expansion that occurs whenever a water heater that's a tank like this is installed. So as the water heater heats, because the, the actual um, volume of the entire system is contained due to the backflow preventer at the street, as it continues to heat up and it expands, the pressure continues to increase. And we need something to act as a buffer, acts as an expansion area for that water to go to. And that's what your expansion tank does. So inside here, there's actually a rubber bladder that has air above and water below. Well, no water right now, but when it's installed, the water will seep up in there and then it pushes against that. So whenever we set this so that it has the pressure of the actual uh, house pressure, what happens is under normal pressure, it sits here and the rubber stays fairly flat. What occurs then as the water heats up is it starts to bow that up into here. It doesn't bottom out at the top, but it starts to bow up, allowing that water to expand without putting excess pressure on all the systems of the house. So that bowed up area there is fine. Whenever we turn on the hot and it relieves that pressure, it just comes right back flat again, over and over again. Now, eventually I've told you this is a piece of rubber inside here. Eventually over time, that can rupture. And once it does that, the air that's up in here is still trapped, but slowly the water will absorb the air until it's no longer actually doing its job. And at that point, we call this waterlogged. When they get waterlogged, because of the fact that they have that rubber diaphragm in there, it's no longer that we can just put air in here and actually get it to work. Yes, in theory, will it work? It, it could. But what's going to happen is since that is no longer separated by that rubber uh, seal, that water is going to eat out that that air much faster because it's going to absorb it at a much faster rate. So like we talked about is this is here to protect the system from the extreme pressures that build up whenever the water heaters are actually running. And so that's the reason why if it's a tank water heater, doesn't matter if it's electric or gas, it needs to have an expansion tank unless we cannot get one in there. Now on tankless systems, unless we're running recirculation systems, there's not a call for these. And even with recirculation systems, there are other ways for us sometimes to manage expansion. But very specifically on all tanks that there is space to install, a expansion tank needs to be installed.